That's outraging Nigeria's local officials in Central Plateau State said the death toll following Christmas Eve attacks by armed gangs has risen to more than 155. President Bola Tinubu says the attackers will not escape justice, but critics say authorities often make such pronouncements without any real action. Timothy Obiezu reports from Abuja. Shelong Gabriel last spoke to two of her male cousins on Christmas Eve. The two brothers, ages 45 and 58, told her they had joined a local vigilante group created by men of their community in Boko's district of Central Plateau State following a warning of a possible attack. Later that night, she says, assailants attacked the village, killing the men and their mother. They mounted um, different um, sides of the community to see how they could defend themselves. But of course, these people came on um, on bikes. They, they came on bikes and they had so much um, machinery so they, they, they couldn't um, hold them off. I lost three of my family. Plateau State authorities say the unknown gunmen overran more than 17 local villages across Bokos and two other districts, burning down houses in the attack. A local district head in Bokos said 155 people have been killed and that the search teams are still combing nearby bushes for missing people. Thousands have also been displaced from their homes. No group has claimed responsibility for the latest attack, but locals blame herders. Plateau State is embroiled in a decades-old ethno-religious conflict between predominantly Muslim herders and Christian farmers. The attack has sparked outrage and criticism against the government. Isa Sanusi is Amnesty International's country director for Nigeria. The rights group has called on authorities to set up an investigation. It is really sad and unfortunate that these kinds of things continue to happen and the authorities cannot do anything apart from sympathizing with the victims, which shows helplessness on their side and which should not be. Rural communities have been allowed to live in the last 10 years or so at the mercy of gunmen. Plateau State resident Mangai Lucas says people have been living in fear since the attack happened. People are at home and nobody is going anywhere, you know. With the situation right now, you can't go far from the house because you never can tell what next will happen. Even that yesterday night, yes, we heard gun shooting. We could not, gun shoot in the night, we couldn't sleep. Nigerian authorities have condemned the attack and promised to hold the perpetrators accountable. Insecurity is a big problem for the government of Bola Tinubu, who came to power promising to address the challenge. On Wednesday, Vice President Kashim Shatima visited the affected villages. Some analysts like Chukudi Victor or Dreme remain critical of the government's efforts. I think the government is not doing enough. It's still the absence of political will. And each time I hear that we're not able to do this or we hear that one person has been kidnapped, it's an indictment on, on our government, an indictment on our security forces. For many families, the holiday season will be a reminder of the violence that left their loved ones dead. Timothy Obiezu, VOA News, Abuja, Nigeria. Torrential rains triggering landslides killed at least 22 people and caused massive damage in central DRC. The French news agency AFP says more than 15 houses were swept away in the landslides caused by the downpours overnight and into Tuesday in Kanaga, the capital of Kasai Central Region. The regional government says among the victims was a woman and her eight children who died in one house while a father and four children were killed in another. On Sunday, around 20 people were swept away when the river flooded in the South Kivu region in the east of the country. After the general elections held on December 20th in the DRC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, or CENI, continues to issue partial announcements of each electoral district. The Congolese political opposition is denouncing irregularities in voting and warns the entire process to be cancelled. But leaders of the union's decree, President Shishkedi's political party, says the call by its competitors is cowardly. From Goma, reporter Zeni Neti Zaidi has the details. 
Year press statement by presidential candidate Setki Kuni case the Congolese opposition believes that the elections should only be rerun. He says after investigating detailed report of the results by central electoral bodies, observation missions, journalists and civil society, the polls do not have any credibility. He says the opposition is calling for the immediate cancellation of the chaotic elections marred by what he calls massive fraud as documented by all stakeholders. This statement comes as the Independent National Electoral Commission is in the process of publishing the partial results of the presidential vote. Nehemi Habayue, a member of the Union Sacre de la Nation, the President Chisekedi's political party, says the opposition should simply have boycotted the entire process. He says if the Congolese political opposition had really thought the elections would not be transparent, then they should not have withdrawn from the competition. He says that not long ago they declared that they were going to win the elections, but today they start calling for the cancellation of the polls. He says only because they are losing, and that is cowardly. According to social political analyst Patrice Sheria, the opposition is right to contest the results given by Seni in full respect of the law. La post -electoral... He says the post-electoral period always poses problems in the country because there are very often protests against the results proclaimed by the Electoral Commission. It is normal and legal for a candidate who feels cheated to contest but only before justice, and they should not take action that would set the country on fire. The announcement of the partial results has started and 1,876,000 877 voters have already been counted in over 40 electoral districts. So far, Felix Antoine Chisekedi leads with 1,527,618 voters, or 81.40% of the total. His closest competitor is Moise Katumbi with 284,952 voters or 15.20 percent. For VOE Africa, I'm Zanim Netizaidi in Goma, Democratic Republic of the... 29 people filed their candidacy for the February 2024 presidential election in Senegal before the deadline of Tuesday evening, midnight local time, and GMT according to the Senegalese Daily Le Soleil. The number of applications submitted to the Constitutional Council has not been made public, but Le Soleil explains that the says de dépôt et consignation, the body that receives the deposit checks of 30 million FCFA 45,000 euros required to run their presidency received 79 applications. The applications include those of the main favorites for the 25th February 2024 election. Amadou Ba, a member of the ruling coalition and Senegal's current prime minister, imprisoned opposition figure Osmani Sonko, former Dakar mayor Karifa Sal, Kalim Wade, son of former president Abdoulaye Wade, and Idrissa Sek, who came second in the 2019 presidential election. President since 2012, Maki Sal announced in July that he would not run for another term. He has appointed Amadou Bar to represent the majority. Senegalese administration has refused to issue the necessary documents for a candidacy to the representative of Mr. Sonko, the central figure in a standoff with the state that has lasted more than two years and given rise to several episodes of deadly unrest. However, Osimani Sonko, 49 years old, has submitted his candidacy to the Constitutional Council, also Yen Lei, the head of the, his party's communications unit, told AFP without giving further details.
Mr. Sonko, who has been in prison since the end of July on various charges, including calling for insurrection, denounces this case and others in which he has been implicated as plots to keep him out of the presidential election. In mid-December, a judge received his candidacy by ordering his reinstatement on the electoral roll, confirming a decision handed down in October by the court of Zingwicher, which had been overturned by the Supreme Court. The state's judicial agent rogged an appeal against this decision on Tuesday, according to Law Soleil. The Constitutional Council is due to announce the list of presidential candidacy by 20th January at the latest. The pre-campaign and campaign will begin on 5th January and 4th February 2024 respectively. The Council National de Regulation de la the division CNRA said in a press release on Tuesday.